what do you want to da da da? I don't know. What do y'all think we should da da da? Well, what did we da yesterday? Hmm, yesterday. All the dolls feel like the same doll these dolls. I know. Like, is today Monday or Tuesday? Today is Thursday. <gasps> oh no, I forgot to call my mom on her birthday. Oh no! Oh, no! These days, nothing is normal and everything is weird. But you could still save big when you switch to Progressive. That won't change. Not to da or any da. Quote to da at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Hey guys, welcome. It's time for this week's episode of the Inside Line Formula 1 podcast. And wow, the Bahrain Grand Prix was absolutely phenomenal. And Kunal, it was so phenomenal that we will spend a few minutes talking about it later on in the podcast. I mean, I know China is only a few days away. I'm very excited. But Bahrain was only a few days ago. <laughs> the benefits of having a back-to-back Grand Prix weekend. And yes, it would be very hard to forget Bahrain for a while to come now. especially given how predictable the races have been in the recent past and to me Bahrain was the perfect advertisement for Formula 1 a classic and a classical grand prix one that was fought on pace and on strategy and when you think of it liberty media is trying so hard to market the sport and all it actually needs is races like Bahrain couldn't agree more so guys we have a lot to discuss in this week's episode Yes, first things first, uh, we are now available on Spotify. So here's to one more platform where you can listen to us for as long as you want. <laughs> oh, I have to mention. So guys, we've been featured on the Apple Podcast Store. So actually when I opened iTunes on my laptop, I was so excited to see that our channel banner is like right in the center. Thank you so much for your support, Apple. And thank you for your support Siddharth Ganguly he is a former colleague of mine a friend an aviation geek a brilliant creative brain so he helped us sort out our graphics so the graphics that you see on the facebook page you'll see on the apple store etc are all thanks to him it's great to have such awesome support from friends family and our listeners yes thank you so much so lots of news from the world of formula 1 and we're going to go straight off and start talking about it First things first. So we had the Liberty Media meeting with the owners uh, uh, in Bahrain, and we actually got our bets wrong. Mithila. One of the few times, uh, yeah. Kunal, I must add. <laughs> Neither Ferrari nor Mercedes issued quit threats, and not many details of the meetings have been revealed. But I could say that Liberty Media managed the meeting and this whole situation fairly well. There were absolutely no adverse reactions at all. Actually, after the meeting, uh, Claire Williams said, "Let's open a bottle of champagne," and I think that's a big hint about how amazingly the meeting went. I also think that if their team performance continues as is on track, they really need excuses like this to open champagne because they <laughs> ain't getting any on the podium. Well, of course, there was a press release issued by Liberty Media which actually repeated what's uh, been spoken about in the public domain. So let's wait for more details to come. But a brilliant joke about Williams and their champagne ways, Mr. Thank thanks. you. <laughs> and Aston Martin, so a manufacturer that doesn't participate in Formula One, and they were the first ones to give their thumbs up. <laughs> It's so odd. Yeah. Also, I don't think we've heard the last of these quit threats or the quit threats. Uh, as details open up, as Liberty Media gets into more action mode, there's still a chance that Ferrari and Mercedes will use this as a ploy to get things their way. Uh, but let's see how it goes. Let's remain positive about it, right? And uh, back-to-back Grand Prix weekends also means that we have a lot to talk about. And since the racing in Bahrain was so phenomenal, we are going to stick to racing, and we will talk about Liberty Media's proposals, their implications, etc., etc., in our episode after China. Uh, and I'm sure we'll have some more dope on this by then too. Yeah, uh, Formula One TV is further delayed. So two races out of twenty-one are done already. And uh, Kunal, I can't imagine how much more fun the Bahrain Grand Prix would have been if we'd uh, had access to Formula One TV. So imagine being able to watch the action via the onboard camera. And like, I would love to see how Kimi Raikkonen would have reacted after his pit stop error or. You know, Lewis Hamilton's face after pulling off that crazy maneuver, <laughs> <laughs> or even Alonso's reaction 
when Lewis Hamilton uh, pulled off the triple uh, overtaking move. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, firstly, it is heartening to see that the mechanic is doing fine and on the road to recovery. I hope that. He has a speedy recovery. Yes, what's also been speedy for him is his number of Instagram followers. He's become an overnight overnight celebrity for all the wrong reasons. Um, let's hope he recovers well. Kimi Raikkonen's actually having a really good start to the season in terms of pace, but yet again, his lady luck is busy shining on Sebastian Vettel, it seems. So Raikkonen missed out in Australia thanks to the virtual safety car period. And then in Bahrain, he had the pit issue that cost him a shot at the podium. And I was so looking forward to a Raikkonen versus Hamilton battle for the podium. Raikkonen was in form during the press conferences too. So he was asked what he would like to change in Formula 1. And his answer was hilarious, guys. Go look for that <laughs> video if you haven't seen it already. Yes. Anyway, we'll talk more about Raikkonen when we speak about Bahrain. For now, it's crucial to speak about Monaco and Russia. They want to lift the ban on grid girls and have them back for their races. It's so funny. So I know that there are penalties for the teams and the drivers if they don't follow the FIA code. But what about the circuit owners? And I'm wondering if they'd be forced to pay a few thousand dollars as a penalty or if there's, you know, a way that they can just break the rules and get away with it. I think I know what they're going to do. They're going to get break the rules and get away <laughs> with it because... Bahrain did that as well. Yeah, they had promotional girls in Bahrain and it's just that they weren't labelled as grid girls. Hey, <laughs> what's in a name, right? It's like a test driver, development driver, reserve driver, all these designations that Formula 1 teams give drivers a lot of times for their money but don't end up giving them the cockpit. So, yeah. something similar here. But uh, the Russian promoter said something so funny and un-Formula 1-like. So, he said that it's wrong at races to lead out children who are frightened of mechanical things. And all of this when Formula One is actually chasing kids left, right and centre to lower the average demographic of a Formula One viewer. Yeah, there's also unlimited DRS being planned to aid more overtaking. Uh, Kunal, I know uh, this is not something you're entirely in favour of <sighs> at all. But I think this rule existed during the early days of DRS too. So we'll track how this goes. Yes, and the Bahrain Grand Prix was actually a good example. So Liberty Media and all those working on solving the overtaking problem should see the race again. Uh, and I think there were some 42 overtakes in the first 10 laps. That was one stack that I wow. read. But, uh, you know, in solving this so-called overtaking problem, let's hope that uh, the powers to be or the powers that are in place don't sit to solve why a much faster Valtteri Bottas couldn't overtake a struggling for grip Sebastian Vettel. I mean, it's good to have a fight for the lead rather than a simple DRS-aided overtake. But Kunal, I can tell you why a much faster Bottas could not overtake a struggling for grip Vettel on track. And that's because it was Botas. <laughs> I mean, just look at it this way. Botas was anyway going to finish second. And I think he should have made at least one proper lunge on the inside. And there's enough of runoff area, especially in Bahrain, to cover up in case he overshot the mark. But he didn't do it because he's Botas. <laughs> well, that's actually very interesting racing analysis from Mithila. One that I would definitely agree with. Thank you very much. And uh, like I said in the video after Bahrain, if Mercedes are looking to groom Hamilton's successor, Valtteri Bottas might not make the cut. But if they're looking uh, for a wingman for Lewis Hamilton, then Bottas would suffice. And this is probably going to be a major consideration for them come 2019 or for 2019. Actually, and this is when Lewis Hamilton is yet to confirm. I read a really interesting reason why his contract extension is delayed. Basically, Helmut Marko said that Mercedes tried to get Vettel or Verstappen to partner with Hamilton. And this was all sort of going on behind Hamilton's back. And this obviously pissed off Lewis Hamilton. And then he went and raised his asking price for the contract. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just Helmut Marko having some fun at Lewis Hamilton's expense, I would say. But uh, I remember reading that Hamilton is waiting for Liberty Media to finalise the future of Formula One before extending his commitment to the sport. And that sounds very grand. But can someone please go and tell Lewis Hamilton that Liberty Media isn't working on driverless cars for 2021 that 
and that he is in a safe position. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm looking at my notes from Bahrain, and uh, they say party mode. And how suddenly it's so strange that there was no mention about it, given how Mercedes got beaten. And there was just the one reference from Verstappen, who said that the party mode shouldn't be banned. <laughs> <laughs> and I had written about Ferrari's smoking starts, and no, I don't mean the ones on the grid. I mean the ones in the garage. The smoke that emanates each time they fire their car up. So one of our listeners, Shijil, uh, said on our Facebook page that Ferrari's smoking starts remind him of pop music videos from the eighties. They used smoke all the time in their music videos. So. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Shijil. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we have to talk about Pierre Gasly's performance. It was so phenomenal. And could not suddenly Red Bull Racing could be looking at Gasly and Honda for 2019? Obviously, early days for both to suddenly get a promotion. But I'm sure this performance will certainly stand out for both of them. Or it could be that for 2019, both Verstappen and Ricciardo ask for the uh, Toro Rosso drive, <laughs> <laughs> given the issues they've had at Red Bull Racing. <laughs> well, in the case of Pierre Gasly, uh, the driver of the day from Bahrain, uh, and like with most of the best of the rest finishers, even in 2017, he finished nearly a minute after our podium finishers. And... Uh, uh, McLaren were happy with their double points finish. Alonso and Van Doorn both had good races. But again, they finished a lap down on the leaders. And frankly, I think McLaren has been really lucky in the first two races because they picked up points when the others have faltered. So we know what happened to Haas in Australia and then to Red Bull Racing in China. In Bahrain. Yeah. Uh, Stoffel Van Doorn overtook 11 cars to get into the points. That is phenomenal. And Alonso has given McLaren two months to perform. And uh, this is contract related for him too. There's any way linkage for Alonso to go off to Renault next season. So I think these are very important two months for McLaren. <laughs> yeah, we spoke about the whole Renault uh, link last episode. In this episode, it's now Haas's name that's turned up. It's, it's about how Alonso could hence go to Haas. Which sounds even strange to me. Mm. But how soon before Force India's name comes up? <laughs> and a... every other team on the grid. <laughs> <laughs> not Sauber, I'm sure. Or, or Ferrari. Not, or Williams. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alonso downplayed Toro Rosso's performance in Bahrain. He called it a one-off. And let's see what China has in store for us. Absolutely. Kunal, I know you are not going to talk about Marcus Ericsson, but I am going to. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I was actually just going to talk about him. There were four drivers in the top 10 who made a one-stop of work. Ericsson was one of them and the other three made it to the podium. Yeah, you know, I actually liked how strategy played a crucial role in Bahrain too. Again, early days, but it seems that Pirelli's new range of tyres should do the trick this year. Yes, this is exactly what Formula 1 and Pirelli were out to do when they started with these degradable tyres or tyres with higher degradation. And I'm, I'm glad that they finally got here or are seemingly getting there. And uh, I also like how Sebastian Vettel didn't issue too many radio messages to Ferrari about his tyres fading in the last uh, few laps of the Bahrain Grand Prix. This was to keep Mercedes at bay and not to let them know of his struggles and Mercedes actually accepted post race that they were slow to react and should have asked Botas to push a lap earlier than they did. All these strategy games are so interesting. Uh, Lewis Hamilton had a compromised weekend. He had a gearbox penalty, started ninth, but still drove a fantastic race to get onto the podium. Yes, and you know when he actually didn't make up positions on the opening lap, I almost thought that he wouldn't make it. But the double Red Bull Racing retirements uh, did help, as did uh, Kimi Raikkonen's. I was so hoping for a Raikkonen versus Hamilton battle for P3. <laughs> We've not seen one off late, but we have to wait some more. Well, you can imagine how both of us were actually so hoping for that battle, because we mentioned that twice in this episode, if I remember <laughs> it right. But hats off to Mercedes, they forced... Ferrari onto a one-stopper and almost won the race. And like they said, 90% uh, chances of winning the race. And uh, when you think of it, Mercedes actually didn't use the medium compound tyre in the FP1 sessions in Bahrain whatsoever, but backed themselves to use it perfectly in the race. That's a very interesting insight. Kunal, I also must admit that Lewis Hamilton's radio messages were also fun for a change. <laughs> <laughs> 
Kimi Raikkonen spit error exposed a system design issue for Ferrari. Basically, the left rear tire was considered safe to release because it never came off in the first place. And that's such a cruel way to find out a system flaw. And I'm sure the FI are definitely looking into how to make pit stops safer for the mechanics because the teams are, are definitely going to keep pushing to make their pit stops faster, which is a visual treat for us. Yeah. But it can't be at the, at the cost of mechanics and safety. This was the third Grand Prix, in fact, in the last four seasons that Kimi Raikkonen retired from the race as a result of an unsafe pit release. Ouch. Yeah, big ouch, no? That too, uh, just Raikkonen. Why yeah, him? Why Raikkonen? <laughs> Leave him alone, guys. So Toro Rosso's other driver, Brendan Hartley, he bit a bird in FP. Sorry, he hit a bird in <laughs> FP and uh, damaged his front wing. So much for Red Bull racing gives you wings. Or I think in Hartley's case, it was clipped his wings. <laughs> Esteban Ocon, congratulations for the single point scored for Force India and for yourself. It was a hard-fought one, I'm pretty sure. And I remember reading how Pierre Gasly said that he and Esteban stopped being best friends after he started beating Ocon at, on track. And that's just so typical of friendships in the world of motorsport. Yeah, you know, Formula One will soon make a hamilton Rosberg kind of story between Ocon and Gasly. I think such rivalries are always fun to follow, you know, especially <laughs> when you get to see them over so many seasons. Yes, and talking of Nico Rosberg, he has become an investor in Formula E. And he will drive the next generation Formula E car on the streets of Berlin next month. So... Formula E is making the cut with manufacturers, sponsors, investors. It has really interesting racing all through the grid. A really talented lineup for all the teams. But I wonder what's holding the fans back from embracing the sport. And I really hope this changes soon in the time to come. Yeah, we shall see. Kunal, we have to talk about Williams in Bahrain. I know we barely saw them in the television feed, but but they're the only team now on the grid to have not opened their championship account. So they're still at zero points. Ouch, that yeah. means they're earning no money apart from the absolute money that Liberty Media will end up paying them. But uh, I think it's going to be a long season ahead for Williams and their driver choice will be questioned at pretty much every race possible. And talking of which, Kubica said that Lance Stroll asks him more questions than Sergius Rotkin. And I really wonder what questions could Stroll be asking. You know, how to gag Sharks will know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we are going to run a segment on what questions would Stroll ask Kubica in the next episode. So if you guys have any witty ones, you know where to send them to us. Yes. And finally, on to China. Hamilton's won here five times already. And on Sunday, he could win his fifth consecutive race in China, which then means that his total number of wins could go up to six. Sebastian Vettel last one year in 2009. So that's almost a decade since his last win. Uh, he will be really hoping to fight Hamilton and change this statistic. Raikkonen and Bottas have actually never won here. And uh, neither Red Bull Racing drivers have won here either. But I get a feeling that it's going to be Vettel versus Hamilton for the victory. And everyone else is going to be just chasing them. <laughs> <laughs> hoping to get onto the podium. Yes, so it's time for our predictions, Mithila. Uh, Hamilton, Vettel, Raikkonen. You know, the next time I'm going to make you ask me the prediction so I can go first. So I don't have to end up repeating your predictions. But I'm going to try and choose something different. I will go with Vettel, uh, Raikkonen and Hamilton. It's a really tough one for it to come true. But why not? And all of this would mean Raikkonen maintaining the same pace that he did in Bahrain. But his lady luck shining on him. That's yeah. the crucial point. Yeah. Uh, and finally, a mention of Bernie Ecclestone. Uh, he attended the Bahrain Grand Prix. He had to because, you know, if there was talk of a breakaway series, he would have liked to air his voice too and be seen <laughs> and all of that. And maybe claim that he would be the CEO of the breakaway series. Or maybe if there was no talk, he would have liked to instigate some talk. <laughs> Who knows? Crafty old man. <laughs> Uh, but Ecclestone being Ecclestone, he landed up in Bahrain in his trademark white shirt and black trousers. But you know what's newsworthy is that he wore his Formula One pin with the old logo. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the cooler logo. <laughs> his logo. <laughs> 
Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Let's hope China serves us a cracker of a race too. We have definitely been spoiled after Bahrain. Uh, the weather in Shanghai is expected to be cooler, and this should play into Mercedes's hands. But would Ferrari have figured out how to make their car work in cooler conditions as well? We'll find out on Sunday, and see you after China on the Monday. Adios. Apple, and I'm here to invite you to come and listen to my new podcast series, Raising April. It's the most intimate sports-related conversations you will hear. Each week, we explore the journeys of some of your favorite NFL players through the eyes of those that know them best. From Joe Burrow, DeAndre Hopkins, Miles Garrett, Ezekiel Elliott, Nick and Joey Boza, just to name a few. With exclusive insights and information, we leave no stone unturned. Subscribe now to Raising April on your favorite podcast app.